Everybody, welcome to the webinar today on the simple and easy lead generation and conversion plan to make over $250,000 a year in real estate. My name is Scott Pierce. I'm the founder of Listings to Leads. We've been in business for about 12 years. And so the things that we are going to discuss today, how much money do you want to make this year? So I got 250, but for some of you, you may want to make a little bit less. You may want to make a little bit more. I don't really care. You're going to be able to do what you want to do. Number two, how many leads do you need to generate to make your financial goal and where should they come from? This is a massive, I think, misunderstanding with a lot of people. And I want to help clear that up today. Number three, we're going to talk about reach frequency and channels. All right. These are really some of your keys to success with the way we set up everything in listings to leads. We do all the hard work for you. And you just need to implement the tools that we train on. All right. So that'll be number three and number four, what do you do after you generate leads to get listings and buyers? All right. This is one of those things, way too many people start generating leads and they have no end game. They have no idea what to do when they get the lead other than to freak out, get nervous, stress out and completely mess it up. All right. So we want to make sure that we cover all four of these things before we start generating leads. The good thing is it's super easy and hopefully at the end of this webinar, you will agree. So first things first, how much money do you want to make this year? Now, at the end of the call, I will be sure to give you a URL. We have got a financial goals calculator online that you can go in and plug all these numbers, play around with them and see what comes up for you. But just assume you want to make $250,000 this year. Average selling price is 300,000 in your area. A commission split of 80, 20. That means your gross commission is going to be $7,500 before the split 6,000 after. And so that means if all of those are your numbers, then you need to sell about 3.5 homes per month. All right. So between three and four months are the number of homes you would need to sell. All right. Now, again. After this call, I'll give you a URL. I don't want you to do it right now, but you can go plug in your numbers. How much do you want to make? What's the average price of a home in your area? What is your split? All right. So all of that and even more, you're going to be able to play around with and come up with how many homes you need to sell per month and per year. All right. So get that done. Now to make $250,000 in the scenario that we just talked about, you would need to generate about 263 social media leads per month. All right. Now I want to back up real quickly and just let you know something here. None of these numbers are made up and none of them are exact. So these are all numbers based on our 12 years of working with top producing agents with new agents that became top producers. And so this is all, all right, this is all just an amalgamation of all of our experience, both as a company. Vince's experience, my experience, our clients' experiences all kind of put together for you. So take these numbers as a starting point. All right. This is where you want to get to. And then your area is going to be different. Every area is different. And so you may need to generate a little bit more in one area or a little bit less than another. But if you reach for and kind of a, try to get a goal for what we're talking about today, you'll be in an awesome position. All right. So we're talking about talk 263 leads on social media. And you can see some of them are ads along the top. We got ads for listings for PDF guides. We've I got free content postings. We're going to be talking about and different offers, like what's your home worth, new construction, down payment assistance, and so on. So there's a lot to social media. Next up is your farm. All right. We're going to recommend having two different farm areas. And from the farm, we want to generate about 18 leads a month. All right. And in the farm, we got things like uh, nearby homeowner letters, postcards, sign writers, listing flyers, expireds, and FISBOs. I'm going to tell you, FISBOs and expireds are easy, easy, easy to go after, especially with listing leads. You'll see more training on that in the coming up this summer. I'll talk a little bit about that in the call today as well. All right. The third area is your seller sphere of influence. All right. Next to you, nobody is more vested into your business outside of you and your family than your sellers, all right? Your sellers need to get that home sold. And so they're, they're very invested into that whole process. And there's an uh, awesome opportunity to generate some really good leads from the seller's sphere of influence, all right? 
And the last is your sphere of influence, your database. So we are going to put a plan together that is going to address and go after every single one of those bubbles on my screen, all right? All the ones under social media, all the ones under farm, your seller sphere and your database. And this is going to be how we build our business. All right, so two slides on some strategy, all right? So listing slides is awesome on the tactics, all right? And the strategy is awesome as well, if you understand it. So first of all is reach. So I think a lot of us get that idea, right? We do an ad, 400 people see that ad, that's reach, right? But the thing that most people completely fail at is the idea of frequency, right? Now, frequency is not how many times people see the ad. Frequency is really more how many times people are seeing your different ads and different messages on different platforms, all right? And I'll, I'll, I'll get to the problem I see with most people, but just keep that in mind about frequency. And here's the deal. If you do an ad once in a while, you're wasting your money, all right? Reach without frequency is a complete waste of money and frequency in the wrong channels is wasted opportunity and also wasted money, all right? So real quick, Seth Godin story here. I think I really want you guys to, to get this because I see some really awful stories where people don't understand frequency. They only understand reach and they just absolutely waste a lot of money, all right? So think about this. If you've got a hundred seeds and enough water to water each one once, but it takes four waterings for the trees to survive and grow, what are you gonna do? All right, what are you gonna do in that scenario? Here's what most people do because they don't think is, they take that hundred seeds and they plant them and they water them with the mindset of like, well, I hope something happens, <laughs> right? That, that's what most people do. So they'll do a Facebook ad, they'll spend a hundred dollars on that Facebook ad and then wonder why nothing happened, right? Why, why, did, why didn't I get any listings? Why did I not get any buyers? Well, because you wasted all your water on a hundred seeds, right? With one watering each, instead of watering each seed four times right? One of the main things that we all know in advertising and marketing is it takes at least five to six to seven times for someone to see your stuff before they even recognize you, let alone like, know, and trust you. All right. So I had a client not too long ago, like within the last month, he used a nearby homeowner letter and he sent out 900 of them at once. Now that sounds awesome. And I'm sure he was excited to get 900 nearby homeowner letters out. But I told him, I was like, dude, you would have been so much better off had you done 205 times to the exact same homes, frequency, right? We want those, we want a frequency within those 200 homes. And if those 200 homes would have seen you five times over a course of like two months, you'd get a lot more business than sending out 900 letters once, All right? Does that kind of make sense for everybody? That idea of reach is good, but frequency is better. So always kind of think about when you're going to be doing something, right? What is my capability for frequency? And by the end of this webinar, I think you'll have a really good feel for that. All right. So let's start getting into it. Let's get into where are we generating these leads from? What does that look like? And then what do we do from there? So social media. So first up our listings, your listings or not your listings. It doesn't matter. All right. It does not matter. Now, if you've got listings, you really owe it to your seller to be marketing them. So you should be always marketing and running an ad for any listing that you have, all right? But for those areas, for those several areas where you really wanna focus, all right? Focus on getting listings, focus on getting buyers. You need to always make sure that you always have ad, ads running in, in those areas even if you have to borrow them, all right? So it's easy to borrow a listing from another agent to advertise for them. And to, here's the thing, it doesn't matter if that listing has been on the market for a year, right? Because we're coming into a different market right now. Listings are gonna be hanging out longer than we think in some areas or that we would have expected a couple of months ago. So the key is advertise listings. We want you to be advertising one buy side listing. So coming soon, just listed active open house. So things where buyers are gonna be attracted to that ad. And then you should also be advertising 
a seller focused listing ad, like a pending or just sold, right? Those pending listings that you've got, those just sold listings that you've got either as a selling or a listing agent are awesome opportunities to get in front of a seller, excuse me, or the homeowners in those farm areas and to engage them further. All right. So listings are number one. Now, the cool thing about the way we do listings and listings to leads, or I should say the, the Facebook ads is we use the Facebook lead ad form. All right. And so because of two factor authentication, most areas, most of the information is good, right? You're going to get first name, last name. You're going to get their email, their phone number, and also their time frame to sell or buy. This is exactly what that lead form looks like after somebody clicks an ad on Facebook or Instagram, you can see the, the name, the email, and the phone number do auto populate based on their profile. And then they will have to select from the drop down what is their selling or purchase time frame. All right. So we're getting a lot of good information from these ads. Now, a couple of other ad types that you can run PDF guides. We've got over 50 of them. We've got, uh, in perfect uh, timing, we've got two more coming for sellers, how to avoid foreclosure and all about short sale homes, right? The short sale, uh, selling process. So those are two PDF guides coming next week that I'm pretty excited about. But running ads for PDF guides is a fantastic way to help gain or add value to homeowners and home buyers. All right. So think about the PDF guides, different offers. What is your home worth? Down payment assistance, new construction. These are great as well. Now we do another webinar, the top five ways to generate seller leads on social media. And I'm gonna tell you right now, get your home value is number five. I mean, it's at the bottom of the list. All right. So those PDF guides, the pending and the just sold listings, right? For social media, those are better, but these are also phenomenal as well, right? We want to, here's the deal. When you think back on all of these ads, right? So the PDF guides, the listings, think about that story that's being told on social media, right? I want people to see that I've got listings coming up, that I have an open house, that I just got something sold. I want them to know that I can give them information on the five dangers of overpricing on home ownership numbers that matter. I want them to know that they can come to me for information about new construction, for down payment assistance, or getting a home valuation. But if I blow my entire budget on one ad the first week of the month, I've got nothing else. I got nothing else. I got no other messages to give, right? I got no other story to tell. I got no other chapters in that book, right? For people to see what I can do for them. So I want you to be thinking about this idea of reach frequency together and what are, what are the messages? What are the story I want to tell in my market and make sure that you're using all the tools and listing to leads to do that. All right. Again, I'm not, I'm not making any of this up. This is all from top producing agents that we've been working with for the last 12 years. And I'm just here to share with all of you what they are doing as best practices. All right. Now we just introduced a new tab in listing to leads called social. You'll see it on the left-hand column, great support right there. There's a great support post on it. You should have this set up to post twice a day, mid morning, mid afternoon with a discipline. And you'll see this on the support post in the support center for this. You should be commenting and tagging one person a day, at least, All right? This is phenomenal engagement. And you'll see on the left-hand side there, there's a post about the tired of boring, the, what does it say? Demotivating and outdated kitchen. That's funny. We just literally got done remodeling our kitchen two weeks ago. <laughs> so, but there's a the post on the left. And when you click it, the article pops up there in the middle and you can see there's a green button there at the top of that center screenshot, get my home value now. And that automatically goes to your home valuation landing page. So it's a phenomenal way to engage people with super good content that they can read. And then what we call soft lead capture, right? So we point them out to an article for more information. And then there's a soft little lead capture header at the top of that page. And then we also have great images for different holidays and different things like that, that I absolutely love. And the clients that are using this are getting great engagement from it. They're absolutely loving it. All right. So this is, I've got mine set up twice a day, 10 AM and 2 PM. And when you get to that post in, or that section in listings to leads, make sure to watch the, uh, how to video first before you set it up. And you'll have, I think, good success with that. All right. And then video, just real quickly, there's nothing you can't do in listings to leads that you can't use video with. 
So when you do a listing ad, there could be a video instead of an image. If you do a PDF guide ad, there could be a video instead of an image. If you do a, what is your home worth, a new construction, a down payment assistance ad, those ads can have video in the actual ad itself. And it is so easy to do, right? So if you're using video, if you're doing video, if you're uh, creating videos, make sure you find out from our support team or from Vince and I, how you can use video in Listing Salise. I think you'll absolutely love it. And I think you'll be super impressed with how Listing Salise can really leverage your videos out into the market, right? So real quickly on that. So social media average cost per lead, buyer leads, $1.86 name, email, and phone number. Seller leads, $5.77 each. Now, these numbers are actually need to be updated. They're probably about almost 40% higher. So the buyer leads are really coming in now between like two, a little over two, two to three dollars each. And the seller leads are coming, I think, more of about nine dollars because we've added the PDF guides. Um, and those leads are a little bit more expensive because a little bit more mid funnel, but still absolutely impressive when you look at the real estate industry in general the cost per lead that you're getting with listing to leads. And these are exclusive, no referral, lead, no referral fees. They are only going to you, all right? Now let's take a look real quickly here, social media lead conversion. And here's the problem again, right? So many people that come in and they go, well, I did a Facebook ad and I called everybody back. No one's calling me, this sucks, right? You, you, you've all heard that before. It just shows that you don't know what you're, you don't understand social media lead generation, all right? Social media leads, I'm not making this up. None of the stuff I'm making up. Social media leads typically take one to two years to convert, all right? They're way far in the process, which is awesome because the sooner I can get somebody in my database and I can start following up with them and keeping in touch and adding value to them, the better it is, right? So if I got someone that's two years out, that's awesome because I'm doing other things that we're gonna walk through here after this, where I'm getting leads that convert a lot faster. Now that said, I just had a client, Kim, out of uh, Sarasota, Florida, talk to her last week. She did an open house, did an ad, got a lead, turned out to be a list. She's already got the listing for that lead and they're looking for a new home in the area, all right? I don't know if it's a move up, move down, I don't know what the deal is, but she did an open house ad, got a bunch of leads, not just one, she got a bunch of leads. And as she was calling them back, one of them turned out to have a home they needed to sell before they bought a new one. And that just happened last week. And I'll tell you what, she must've got that listing within a few days because she's like, yeah, I ran that. I talked to her last week. The ad was the, two weeks ago. So it's a week previous. And within a week of that ad running, she had the listing already signed and not looking at new homes for them. So just because these are averages, right? Notice the curve starts from zero. If you can see my cursor here, the curve does start trending up right away, but it's pretty slow, right? And then it peaks out a little bit later here. So social media, a lot of leads, but they tend to close far out, all right? Number two, your farm. This is where we wanna be at, all right? I don't care if you're a 10 year, 20 year agent or a one to two week agent, as far as being in the business, you can dominate your farm, no problem. All right, now we got a lot of great tools. We got the nearby homeowner letter. We got postcards for your listings. We've got door hangers and you can do this whether it's your listing or not. You can borrow listings to hold open. You can do it for your listings, but this absolutely works. I'll tell you what, a lot of you, if you're clients of ours, you know who Dustin Fox is, you know who Alicia Plus is, right? You know these people because we talk about them a lot. Well, Dustin Fox started with this letter in like 2016, as a single agent, him and his wife, they now have 20 people on their team, I believe. I just spoke to Dustin two weeks ago. He is still using this letter. He still uses this letter, I think, with every single listing he does. And I believe he said he does it three times. It's either two or three times still per listing. Alicia Plus, you may know her from the Mastermind Group two or three years ago. I talked to her two weeks ago. She is still excited about using this letter for her listings, all right? So you may have done this letter once and you got nothing from it and then blah, 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 it doesn't work, right? What do you know about doing something once? What can you tell? You go to the gym once, you come back, you're sore as heck, it didn't work, 
It just made me feel worse than I already felt before I went there. That's business. That's life. That's how it works out. You got to do it. You got to learn. You got to keep doing it because no one knows you from a one-time send, right? They see you one time, they look at it. Even if they like it, they may set it down and forget about it. And it's that second and third time that they get the stuff and they go, all oh, right. Yeah. I meant to call her last time and I totally forgot about it. And they may do that three or four times before they actually do, right? Frequency, frequency, frequency. All right. Super excited. This is not live yet, but I wanted to show you because it's coming live soon. We are, we got postcards for all those PDF guides, the seller PDF guides. So all the seller PDF guides in your listing to leads account, right? Are going to have postcards. There'll be a QR code and you, you will control the lead form. So people scan the QR code and the lead form pops up, fill out the lead form and they go to download the PDF guide. You'll have door hangers and you'll have postcards. This will be awesome. You have an open house, hang up a couple of door hangers around the, the listing that you're holding open, yours or not. What a phenomenal way to create and add value to homeowners around your listing. All right. So can't wait probably two to three weeks on that. And for those of you wondering about the express copy API, I think that's going to be live next week. We are testing on, uh, we're doing live testing right now. It looks really good. Updating a few things on that. And, and so I think it's going to be live today is Thursday. It's going to probably be live Tuesday or Wednesday of next week. All right. So I'm super super excited about that so pay attention to that but more farms tools here we got letters that run off of the property valuation plus landing pages and postcards like this so the deal is there's no shortage of opportunity for you to to use direct mail in your farm area that absolutely crushes it the nearby homeowner letter for listings yours or not you got the the tools right here that run off the property valuation plus landing pages that you don't need a listing at all. And within two or three weeks, you're going to have postcards and door hangers for all of those awesome seller PDF guides. All right. And this is just, I love this from Chris Winstead here, this guy, I can't remember where he moved from, maybe like Philadelphia or somewhere pretty far away, moved to San Antonio, brand new, never lived there before five deals, five listings in three months right? Using the letters, using video, right? We talked about video a little bit ago and doing a few other things that you're going to see throughout this webinar. All right. So all of the stuff I'm sharing with you is totally doable. And we got, let's take a look at Pat because I love Pat. She had some really good stuff to share with us as well here. <clears throat> let's see if that will come up. And you know what? Let's not worry about Pat as much as we love her. Sometimes video within the webinar kind of clogs things up. But what Pat was going to say is she uses those letters, the nearby homeowner letter, three times, just listed, pending, and just sold, right? And she also uses Red X to call those same homes. She has a great script. Get in the mastermind group if you want more information about that. But she has a great script. And she got three listings in one building within three months using that letter. And and in her words, she's talking to a lot of homeowners. So she, there's a lot more in the hopper coming her way, but three listings in three months from, from zero. All right. Three listings in three months and talking to a lot more of those homeowners. All right. Now, the second thing in your farm area, sign writers and listing flyers. You may think you're too good for a sign writer, but you're not. All right. You might think our listing flyers are not all that they're cracked up to be, but you would be wrong. You need, we did a survey of our clients in March, two months ago, half of the clients using sign writers, like the ones you see here are getting listings from them. All right. See this right here, this picture here says coming soon on top text information here. This is what your sign, your yard signs should look like, right? I don't care about your phone number at the bottom of this. In fact, I'd rather you not have your phone number there, right? What I'd rather have is this right here, right? Text, and it's got the property ID to 25678. So that way, when they text that, you're going to get notified right away. You're going to get notified from listening to leads right away. So you'll be able to call them back and ask if they have any questions about the property, go through your script. Every 
lead you get from us should have a buyer or seller script in it. If you don't know what to say to them, but I'm telling you, you need to be using either our text IVR system, right? If you don't have one from another platform, but if you've got one for another system, you can use that. But I would say ours is really good because as you can see here in the listing flyers, we integrate those, the text information into the postcards, into the nearby homeowner letter, into the listing flyers, into Instagram, right? Instagram does not allow links in a regular post, right? So imagine having the text in the Instagram post so that you can generate leads from a straight up Instagram post all day long, all right? You can't click a link in Instagram, all right? Unless it's an ad. So, and then here's the thing about those listing flyers. Again, this is one of those ridiculously simple, re stupid almost things that nine out of 10 people will just not do because they don't think it's needed. I'm telling you right now, I would get a clear flyer box, right? Clear uh, brochure box. I would get it on my yard sign, my, right there. And I would keep it filled up, right? With up-to-date flyers, all right? If I have an open house, I'm gonna put open house flyers in it. And I'm gonna put an open house sign writer on the top. When the listing goes pending, you need to make sure that you got the pending sign writer. And then you got, because that is a phenomenal time to start generating even more seller leads. So here's the point, use the sign writers and the listing flyers, all right? Fizbos. So you're going to see a lot more from us on Fizbos. I'm telling you, every Fizbo in your area. Now you heard me mention Red X a little bit earlier, right? With the idea of you send out those nearby homeowner letters to hundred homes and you would call those same 100 homes using a program like Red X. Well, you can also use Red X to get all the Fizbos and expireds in your area. And I'm going to give you a 30 second golden way to get a lot more listings. Every time there's a new Fizbo, right? Use Red X, it's gonna pop right on your phone. You're gonna call the Fizbo up. Just schedule a viewing. You don't need to get all fancy. It, they're gonna get called by 50 agents and not one of those 50 agents are gonna go actually view the property. They're just gonna bother that homeowner about listing with them. And they're all gonna tell the homeowner they're an idiot for trying to be a for, for sale by owner. And that's not gonna get them the listing, all right? Schedule a viewing, take some pictures, Put the listing, put the pictures into listings to leads, offer some of the tools to the homeowner so they can better market their property themselves. And when they get tired of that in a few weeks, they'll list with you and you didn't have to do any selling. You'll stay in touch with them. We'll go into more training on that, get in the mastermind group. We can discuss that more, but I'm just telling you right now. And you know, also you can take that, all those Fizbo's again from Red X and you can upload them as a custom audience through listings to leads and run Facebook ads to them, right? We've got a FISBO PDF guide that you can run ads to the FISBOs on social media. So this is just a ridiculously simple way, right, to do it. But again, Red X all the FISBOs, schedule a viewing, take some pictures, offer the tools, stay in touch. You'll get a lot more FISBO listings than you ever thought you would ever possibly get. And here's the thing, I would treat expires the exact same way. I'd call up an expired from a year ago and just say, do you mind if I come see your property? I got some buyers for the area. I saw that you listed your home about a, you know, six months ago, a year ago, two years ago, it didn't sell. Keep this in, my, in mind for three to six months from now, when you see more expires coming on the market, I, I would just approach expired the exact same way. Can I come to do a viewing, take some pictures, show them what my marketing tools look like and all the different tools I have. If you're ever thinking about listing in the future, let me know, but also do you mind if I keep you in mind for any buyers that your home may be appropriate for, right? Can I keep you in mind as an expired homeowner that I could call maybe in a month or two as I get more buyers for this area? I think you'll be pleasantly surprised at how well you do, all right? One of our clients, Corey here, one nearby homeowner letter, I think it was like to 200 condos, got two listings and got another one coming up. Now, here's the cool thing about your farm when you're generating leads from it. Look at that, look at that graph. Look, look where that graph peaks, right? That graph peaks a lot earlier than social media, all right? So it may be really cool to get on Facebook uh, mastermind groups and start talking about all these perfect social media funnels that you're doing, right? And it's awesome. And people are converting those leads, 
But if you're really serious and you're, and you're really wanting to, that business sooner, more regularly, this is where you need to be at right here. You need to be in your farm, right? And there's a lot more that you can do here, obviously, than what we've covered on this webinar. But I hope that you get the idea of what you're needing to be doing here, all right? Now, area number three, the seller sphere of influence. Now, this is the only one that is only for listing agents. Everything else that we've talked about, anybody can do. You may have gotten your license yesterday. You can do everything we're talking about up until now. And then in the next section you can do, but this one is for listing agents only. And I'm telling you, I see so many people, I guess they're just scared, right? I, I think they're just scared of how this works. So let me just show you here. This is what a social media post on your seller's Facebook page could look like, all right? Awesome. And the thing about this is the seller, they want to sell their home. All right. Now we got a great script. I'll, I'll be super brief with it right here, but when you pr get prepared to sell, to send the seller, the social media posts like this one, and there's also an e flyer that looks like this, right. For every status now enlisting leads, put in the name and the email and it gets sent off to the seller. You get CC'd on it and you're going to call the seller up, right. And it, this could be whether it's coming soon, just listed, active open house pending, or just sold, you'll rephrase my script to be appropriate for that status. But it'd be something like this, right? Hey, Vince, this is Scott. Just want to let you know that we got your property into Zillow, into realtor.com. I got the Facebook ad out there. It's already being seen by people. I'm going to be sending some announcements to my database here pretty soon, but I wanted to make sure I sent you something to put on Facebook and also share via email because you're going to know people who know people that are looking to buy in the area and we don't want to leave any stones unturned. Did you kind of catch that, right? So here's what we're doing in that script to the seller. We're letting them know about all the things we're doing, right? Cause we're, we're the agent here, right? So we better, we better be doing the, doing the most work. All right. So we're doing all that. We're letting them know about all the work we're doing. And then we let them know that we sent them something. All right. So I'm not going to be on the lookout. All right. So Scott sent me something. And then we're going to put it in context of, we want this on your social media page. We want you to share this via email because you're going to know people who know people looking to buy in the area. All right. Does that make sense for everybody? Everybody kind of got that idea because here's the thing. These generate leads. They generate really good leads and they can generate a lot of leads. All right. Back to Dustin here, he, it took him, right? As awesome of a client as he is, it took him, his seller, asking him for something to share before he ever did it. Before he ever did anything with the seller stuff here that I just showed you, it took the seller going to him. Imagine how crazy that is, right? Your seller has to come to you to ask you for marketing tools. And then, so you give it to him and then you get a listing from it. Right. That that's absolutely brilliant. So always make sure you're using those tools. All right. Hey, and Vince, can you, everybody hear me? Okay. I have not seen anyone mention, ask a question or anything since 10 o'clock. And I'm hoping everybody's seeing my screen and hearing me. Okay. So if somebody wants to let me know, that'd be great. Make sure I'm not talking to thin. Thank you, Sue. I appreciate that. Awesome. All right. Let's keep going here. So, and again, here, I love the graph on this, right? The graph on the seller sphere of influence leads, right? It peaks really nicely there earlier than the social media. It's kind of within range of the farm, but this is free and easy. This is so free and it's so easy. And here's the thing. You call a seller up, quick script with a seller, right? And after they post it on their Facebook page, I would, I would go and like the post and I might even leave a quick non-committal, just quick, easy comment. Like looks great. Can't wait to see you on Tuesday. Looks great. Looking forward to the open house coming up. Looks great. We got the inspection, you know, I'll see you at the inspection. We just want to make sure we like and or comment on that uh, post. So that way we get notified when their friends start engaging with it. All right. And don't stalk the post. Don't freak people out. Get into the mastermind group. We can talk more about the uh, best ways to approach that. But we do want to be engaging. 
All right. We want to be helpful. We want to add value. All right. But we don't want to be too stalky. So <laughs> there's always a, a little bit of a art, a little bit of a science behind that kind of stuff. Right. We're all business people here. So there you go. All right. <clears throat> the last area is your database, your sphere of influence. All right. Now, again, we got those 50 plus PDF guides and I'm super excited. We actually got the how to avoid foreclosure, the all about short sale home process. And we even got one how to winterize your home, which would be pretty good in a couple of months to start promoting for the fall. But these PDF guides, again, absolutely awesome. One of our clients took one. Now he was using a different CRM and I can't remember what he was using. It might've been, no, I can't remember. Probably, K, it was, I believe it was KV Core. So he took the PDF guide from his listing Salids account and sent it to 300 of his coldest leads. All right. 300 of his, oh, let's go back one. Sorry about that. And he got, now these are 300 leads that never responded to a follow up, never responded to a listing alert, never responded to anything. He got a 10% response rate from this PDF guide. All right. So you should be sending out a PDF guide to your uh, database once a week. I would send one seller and I would just send it to my whole database where you may have a buyer lead that owns a home. You may have a seller lead that's going to buy a home, right? I mean, if you're selling your home, unless it's, you know, probate or something, you're going to be buying a home, right? So, you know, if I send my seller lead something on the buying process, awesome. If I send my buyers something on the selling process, awesome. I'm, I'm going to be educating them on different aspects of real estate. So my point being, use these guides. All right. They're absolutely awesome. They average, they kind of range between like seven and 10 pages. So we want to give these people enough information to then reach out to you to have more conversation. We don't want to send them, you know, a 50 page thing that's going to completely drown them right with, with information. We want to, we want that, we want that PDF guide to be a bridge between them wanting, requesting, getting information and you being the provider of that detailed expert information that they really need to move forward with. All right. A little bit more here, automated follow-up. Enlisting to leads. I am super, super stoked. In the last maybe three weeks, I've had four or five calls with people, really good agents, like agents that coach other people. And they have said our, our email follow-up is absolutely some of the best in the industry. Because here's the deal. So imagine you have, I think there's like 20 plus email follow-ups for the sellers. And so all the odd ones, like the one that the first, third, fifth, seventh are all super, super short questions. Like you see the one here, dog or cat, right? So this is for a, a buyer lead, right? So all the, every other email is a super short question like this one here, right? So this is a buyer lead. If you're looking for a new home and have a dog or cat, let me know. Well, there's really no such thing as a cat park. They do what they want. I can send you a list of the closest dog parks that you may want to check out. Boom. That's, that's my follow-up. That's like, I think like the fifth or sixth, uh, or yeah, fifth or seventh follow-up in the buyer sequence. Cause what are we trying to do with follow-up? We're trying to engage. Here's a problem with 95% of follow-ups out there. They spend way too much time boring people to death with their 500 word essays that no one's ever going to read. So all we're trying to do is super short engagement questions. And then all the other emails. So the two, four, six, eight are all the different PDF guides automatically queued up to go out to the buyers and the sellers. Now in our system, we, we send the seller guides to the sellers only, and we send the buyer guides to the buyer leads only. All right. But I don't think there's anything wrong with, like I said before, of if you're using KV core, if you are using, uh, line desk, wise agent, whatever you're using, grab a PDF from listings to leads, create an email in your inline desk or whatever it is you're using and just pick a day and every day you're going to send out a PDF guide to your whole database. Right? So there's that. 
We've also got the listing flyers for your database. So I believe in the, in your account and listing city, it's called eFlyer for your database. We manage a number of accounts for different agents. And this is one of the tools that we send out, right? You know, on behalf of those agents, this typically gets twice as many opens, clicks, opens and clicks than your standard listing alert or your standard follow-up from whatever CRM you're using. All right. So, and this email, you'll get a lot of people just emailing you back, like replying back. You get people clicking the links and going to your lead capture single property website. You get people clicking links and going to your free home buyers landing page. All right. So here's the thing. If your follow-up in line desk or whatever CRM you're using, is not that great. I would just use our PDF guides once a week and I would use the listing flyers right as well. So I might do the listing flyers every Wednesday and the PDF guides every Friday. And that would actually be better follow up than most of you are doing right now. Right. I would also use, just use ours, right? Right now it's email only. I will let you know, we're working on the text follow-up. So, uh, text is part of a campaign or mass texting, like a one-off to a group. All right. So we are working on that. You'll get a 10 digit number and then you can, uh, start sending messages, like I said, via a campaign or a blast. So that's coming soon. And then we got a few other like voicemail drops and different things like that coming. All right. So here's the curve on the database. Now this is really my favorite. All right. Great curve, right? Just shoot straight up, right? Similar to the farm, right? Just kind of like the farm, man, that curve. Phew, right straight up, you know, it's peaking between six and 12 months, six and 18 months, even six to 24. It looks absolutely awesome curve right there. Really from three to 24, you're looking really strong. All right. And here's the deal. I want you to think about Facebook leads. So we all know internet leads suck, right? That's the, 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 the going phrase for internet leads for the most part, but I want you to think of it a little bit differently. So you're generating leads on Facebook and Instagram. All right. Now I just told you one of our clients two weeks ago, got a lead and within a week she had a listing and out looking at buyers and that's not uncommon. That happens, totally happens. Right. But I want you to be thinking about how Facebook and social media leads, when they drop into your CRM, now they are database leads. All right. So, you know, just don't, don't freak out about how Facebook leads suck because we know they suck. All right. But a Facebook lead, when they drop into your CRM, now we can call them. Now we can drip on them. Now we can send them PDF guides. Now we can retarget them, right? If you're using listings to lead, hopefully you got that set up to happen automatically, all right? That we're retargeting them. And so think of those Facebook and social media leads for the most part as just putting them in my hopper to further engage with them on frequency, right? They became a lead probably after, after seeing you one or two times. And now they get they, the need to get to like, know, and trust you. And that's what we're doing with all of this other stuff. All right. We got to increase the like, know, and trust. All right. And here's my favorite thing right here. Look at that. So on the social media graph, right? Peaks out at about between 18 and 20 months. The farm right peaking out a little bit after six and look at that 400 percent increase in a year faster so for all of you that are sitting there just doing your facebook ads because it's easy and it looks great you're you're sitting there a year out with 400 percent fewer deals all right so when you think about that the more involved you get with the stuff of the seller your database and your farm well, now you're talking, right? That's, that's what you want to view. And you want to be doing all of it because again, I want to keep remembering the, the social media stuff here drops into the other stuff. When I send out a nearby homeowner letter, hopefully they will have seen one of my ads and we'll have seen different ads and go, oh, that guy, Scott Pierce. I know, I think he had an open house recently and I know he had a, some pending listing and something about five dangers of overpricing. And now I got this letter. I'm, I'm seeing this dude all over the place. And I saw some video that he did on something or other. I'm seeing the guy all over the place, right? It, it's not your, it's not your Poxitani Phil 
agent who pops her head up once every 12 months, right? Oh, here's, here's my ad I did in February and I got no leads from it. And I got no business. They suck. Well, he did one ad in February. That's not really a marketing plan, right? That's, that's not what we're trying to do here. So let's keep going here. Now here we all love pie charts. So this is what it looks like on a pie chart. All right. Social media is going to be the bulk of it because those leads, right? A lot of times they do suck. So, but they're easy and they're cheap and we're going to, the more we do it, the more domination we're going to get over time. So we got to work our way through the kind of the early stages of social media market domination with our advertising and marketing. Then you can see up here, we got your farm and then your seller sphere and database and your database. Now for all of you new agents on this call, you don't have any listings and you really don't have much of a database to speak of. So you are going to be leaning into social media and your farm a lot more. All right. A lot more. So make sure, right. You understand that we've got a plan for you as well. So, you, you know, just because you can't market to the, use the seller tools and the database tools, it doesn't mean you're going to fail. You're just going to do a few things differently and you're going to build up your database right? You're going to get listings. So it, it's all good. Now, this is a slide. I absolutely forgot to have this done, but I really wanted to show this to you because I want you to see this is not expensive, right? For a one listing at one status, we're looking at about $135, right? So you see there at the top, I got a Facebook and Instagram ad, 35 to 50 bucks, depending on the status, right? The social media auto post, Facebook auto post is free. The stuff to the seller is free. The e-flyer to my database is free. The nearby homeowner letter, I'm going to say it's a hundred bucks, right? Cause we're going to do a hundred letters, a hundred postcards or whatever. So I'm going to say that's a hundred bucks. The sign writer is free, but maybe I should put like $10 cause the tax IVR is $10 a month with listing to leads. But once you get that sign writer, right, it's free because I got the sign writer. And I'm going to, I'm going to move that sign writer around to different signs as I have new listings. So maybe, you know, we'll say 15 bucks for the, for the sign writer, 10 a month for the text IVR. And then that's just five bucks a month for the sign writer itself. But if you got two or three listings, that's going to come down even more. All right. So we'll let, but we'll add 15. So let's say it's 150 bucks. I'll, I do have a hundred, uh, 25 bucks for the listing flyers. And I can say I did not add that in there. So I guess we're looking at about 175 bucks. All right. So 175 bucks to market this just listed listing. And we should really be doing this every week. All right. A different listing or a different li listing status every single week. And here we're looking at 175 bucks or so. All right. Now, what do we do? after we generate the lead. This kills me. So many of you, you have no idea, but I, I do calls with two to three, sometimes up to five agents a day. And I would say about half of you, or I don't want to say you, half the people I talk to, they really don't have a good understanding of what's going to happen once they generate a lead. Now, some of them will go, well, yeah, it drops into KV core, drop in the line desk. Okay. That's great. So what happened? What, then what happens? I don't know, just goes in the line desk, right? You gotta know. All right. So first things first, you gotta call them back immediately. All right. Even, even five minutes is too long. And here's the deal. I may have sent a text over a sign writer. I may have responded to a Facebook ad. I may have called off a nearby homeowner letter. There's a million things I could, I'm how it became a lead, whatever. It doesn't matter. The thing is I'm not sitting still waiting for you to call me. I'm probably doing two or three things at once. All right. And if you wait more than five minutes, I don't know if it's just me, but I'm probably not going to remember who the hell you are or why you're calling me because I probably looked at two or three other homes. And so when you say, oh yeah, I'm calling about that home at five, six, five Maple drive. I got to remember like, well, those 10 other homes I also looked at, what, what the hell was that? And which home was it again? Right. So the quicker you call back, the faster, all right? Number two, assume they are not ready to buy or sell. They just want information. They just want information. They just want information. They just want information. 
when you come up with your really strong, you know, let's sign the listing agreement and da, 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 you're just, you're freaking them out. You're scaring them away. And the likelihood of them listing or setting up an appointment on that first call is so m minuscule, right? I don't, I, I barely think it's even worth it. Now, if anybody wants to, you know, discuss that, I'd love to hear your thoughts on that, but I would say reference what they're coming in on. So if it was a listing or a PDF guide or a landing page, right? You want to refer to that. Listen, the more they talk, the better, right? We all like to think the more we talk, the better, right? I do. I love talking apparently because I think, you know, I just talk, 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 but it's when the other people talk, that's, that's when it gets good. All right. So try to listen a lot more, let them know that you're going to send them now here. This number five is the listing leads follow up, or it could be yours. If yours actually does provide value. If you're just sending 500 death word essays every couple of days to people, I would skip it. All right. You're probably doing more damage than you are good at that point. But if you're using our follow up, right, maybe you turn the email part off from KV core or whatever, and use our emails, let them know that you're gonna send them more information and they will get value from it. They just will. Right. Or if you're going to commit to sending our PDF guides once a week to your database, then I think you can make that offer there. Number five, share something share worthy. So try to have like, you know, what was the most expensive home that sold in that area? Maybe you keep a, a, a cheat sheet with you. Right. So when I get a lead off a home in area X, and I'm talking to a buyer lead or I'm talking to a seller lead, you know, that can refer to a few of the things that are going on in that area so that I sound a little bit more intelligent that I sound like an actual resource for real estate in that area. All right. So that's always good. And just understand follow up this forever. It absolutely kills me when I see these people like, yeah, we got a six month follow up campaign. I'm always like, what the hell happens on the seventh month? Like we just give me all those leads. So for all of you that have a six month follow up plan, give me all your leads after the six month follow up plan is over with, and I'll take them over and I'll start closing a lot more of them than you probably put up. All right. So just understand follow up is forever. It never stops. All right. So a little, little bit of a recap here. These are all the different places you need to be generating leads from. All right. I don't care if you're using listings leads or not. You're probably using listings leads. You may have another program that you're using that you're kind of mixing stuff up together with. That's cool. If that's what you like to do. But all of these things that you're looking at on your screen right now can be done at a very high level using listings to leads. All right. Your ads, you can't do it any quicker or any better than listings to leads. You just can't. Whether for your listings, your PDF guides, you know, what is your home worth, down con new construction, down payment assistance. There's literally no other program or platform out there that's easier and better than listings to leads. Then we got our farm, right? So many people love to forget about the farm, right? They just, I don't know. I would pick two areas. So I got, when I talk about those letters, right? Those letters should be going out to your farm, you know, every, every couple of, you know, a couple of times a month, hopefully. All right. Your yard signs. Oh man. So many people just fall apart. It's just, it's sad, right? Even where I live, when I drive around, I just, Maybe I see 5%, maybe 5% of yard signs have a sign writer and a text thing on it. And less than that have flyer boxes. And it's so sad. So you got to be doing that. And the exp expires of physicals, I'm telling you, you do not need a 20 point, uh, mail call, blah, blah, blah campaign. One call in the beginning, you call them up, schedule a showing or viewing, not a showing, but a viewing, cause you're gonna go look at it. You're gonna love, you, of course you got buyers for that area. If you're running Facebook ads for that area, you've got buyers for that area. So just, you're good. And I would do the same thing with expireds and physicals, right? Both schedule a viewing, ask me to take some pictures to share with your audience, right? Your, with your people, come back to your office, your home. I would upload those, uh, photos into my listings leads account. I would set it up as like a, a, a FISBO listing or an expired listing. You can do that as a status in listings to leads. And then I would share back those tools and just say, hey, listen, it was awesome for you to give me the viewing. I just want to show you what I'm going to share with some of my people. And if you'd like to have this single property website and e-flyer, and I can even give you an open house sign-in sheet. If you want to do an open house yourself at any point, 
let me know. I'm more than happy to send it to you, right? Add value, right? Add value to these people. And then just check in with them, right? Go over every couple of three weeks, right? Stop in and say hello to them, right? But I'm gonna tell you right now, they're gonna get about 50 phone calls a day from the desk warrior agents, all right? A lot of agents love, a lot of agents love to hide behind the computer and do, you know, social media ads here and there. There's even fewer that love to be the phone call warriors, right? But here's the deal. There's even fewer that actually go out and look at the home, that actually meet the homeowner. And that's the goal here, right? How many times do you get listing agreements sent to you over the computer, right? Without ever having met the homeowner. So the quicker you can meet the homeowner, the quicker you are to establishing that relationship and getting that listing. So call them up, but the call is not to get the listing. The call is to get the viewing on these. All right, let's get into the seller's fear. So again, stop making excuses why you're not doing it. It's not the seller's issue. It's your issue. And you need to be using that. Here's a quick little story. One of our clients sent this out and the lady it was like 95 years old or something in her nineties and not on Facebook, not on email, but she did, you know, have an email, whatever, sent it to her kids, her kids shared it. So all of her kids posted on social media, all of her kids shared via email and the agent had more leads from that than they did probably from the Facebook ad, but they were just stunned. Like, oh my God. And these are great leads because it's the seller promoting you, right? When you look at the Facebook post that the seller does or the email that the seller sends out, they are sitting there promoting you and all those links go back to your lead capture tools, listing a property website, the virtual tour, right? It's, it's just phenomenal. You've got to be using it. If you're not, you're just wasting your money, to be honest with you. And then the last thing here is a database follow-up, right? Please think of your database as a sphere, right? But they don't owe you anything just because they're on your database doesn't mean they're going to close with you, right? Doesn't mean they're going to do anything with you if you're not going to provide value. So they can be in your database, but so what? If you're not going to send them out something of value, if you're not going to send them something that they're going to engage with, you might as well just cancel your database program and just save your money. All right. So make sure you are engaging your database the way we talked about here. All right. Now. Follow the plan, right? It's not magic, right? There's no magic here. There's nothing here that any one of you could not do, right? There's no secret. There's no, there's, there's no top producer secret that you're not, I promise you, there's no secret that you do not know about because this all just, it's all, the secret is frequency. The secret is doing it consistently. That's the secret. And that's where most people fail. So more tips, training and online community apps. I, I tell you what, I, if for any of you who've been clients for a while, I hope you appreciate and enjoy our social media as much as I have been in the last three or four months, Instagram.com, go to Instagram, just find listings to leads, YouTube.com forward slash listings to leads. We got a mastermind group. That's pretty slick. And then we've also got a blog listings to leads.com forward slash blog. If you're a client of ours, awesome. Thank you for your business. We love working with you. But if you are not a client, you could be an agent and get an agent account with us. It's actually $60 a month now. If you are a client paying 40, you're, you're locked in at 40. So don't worry about that. But for anyone new, it is 60 bucks a month. We have office accounts, which is great. If you got like five or more agents, that's when it's kind of good to look at an office account. We've even got team accounts. So if you're a team. So you're a team leader and you got, let's say two or three agents underneath you, definitely talk to us. We have team accounts as well. And then lenders and title officers. So if you're a lender or a title officer, we got accounts for you as well. We also do managed services. Although I really like to tell people, you don't need managed services, right? How awful is that? I'm sitting here telling you, you don't need something that we offer. But anyways, cause here's the thing. I always think you're going to do a lot better when you know how to do this and when you can do your own fishing. You're going to be able to say, you know what? I'm kind of tired of the fish here. I'm going to go over here and fish. Well, if we're doing all the work for you, it's just a lot harder for you to make that pivot. All right. So how awful is that? <laughs> all right. The 10,000 member mastermind group. If you are a client, I hope you're in there and sharing some of the successes that you're having. Here, here's a problem. I talked to so many agents, right? They're killing it. 
but they're too busy to even get into the mastermind group. And I always tell them like, Mike, you're, you know, you're killing me, right? You're getting all these deals, you're getting these listings, you're getting great success, but you're so busy that you don't have time to get in the mastermind group and start messing around in there. But anyways, I do try to interview people and share those stories with you. So keep a lookout for that kind of stuff. And with that, I nailed it. It's 1101. That was one hour and one minute. And we do have a couple of questions. Tommy must've been a little bit late to the call here because yes, I mentioned earlier, Express Copy, I think should be live probably next Tuesday or Wednesday. The webinar will be available on YouTube and in our mastermind group after this call. And da, 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 da. yes, yes. You can enter a listing like a FISBO. Candace, get with support or in the mastermind group on that. But essentially you just click the green add listing button, select manual from the dropdown. And then when you land on the page where you enter the listing information at the top of that page is a drop down, and you'll see like coming soon, active, just listed, pending, and you'll see FISBO. You'll also see just sold selling agent, just sold listing agent. So if you are a selling agent on any listing, you can add that to listing to leads and do the just sold marketing. All right. Just make sure you take your own pictures. Can we send an email and attach a PDF? Janice, what was that for? I'm sorry. The, the short answer is yes, you can. And also pretty soon for those of you that I'm sure are thinking, maybe thinking this, we are working on giving you the ability to upload a CSV file of leads from another source and bring those into listings to leads. So I'm not sure. I don't know when that's going to be live. I don't know, like probably two to four weeks from now, but that is coming soon. Yeah, Janice, yeah, the answer is for sure, yes. So what are you using? Uh, what program are you using, Janice? Vince, I have been a random customer. So KV Core, I'm going to say, yeah. I'm going to say pretty sure you should be able to do that. So I don't know KV Core that well, Janice, but I assume you're going to go in, email marketing, create email blast, or maybe it's just create email. Do that. You would, here, you know what I would do, Janice? If you're trying to... uh for like, what would you put in the email? So you're going to attach the PDF guide, of course, right? But what are you going to put in the, in the body of the email? Go to ads and listing to leads, go to ads, create ad for a PDF guide and select the same PDF guide and just copy the same text that would be in the ad for that PDF guide and use that in your email. You might have to edit it a little bit just to make it appropriate for an email versus a Facebook ad, but you can get the gist of it by copying from what the Facebook ad for that PDF guide would be into an email. Hopefully that makes sense. Vince. Yes. The presentation will, I don't know if it'd be sent, but it'll be on YouTube, youtube.com forward slash listings to leads. And, um, it'll also be in the mastermind group. All right. Awesome. The, 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 the Vince Meza, any other questions at, for, from you and Janice? Yeah. Like I said, you will be able to actually add your contacts to listings to lead soon, soon, whether it's two weeks, four weeks, I'm not sure, but we are working on that. So yes, you will be able to do that uh, a little bit down the road. We are mailing more, more, so you have the options, right? More original. Yeah. We don't want, right. Exactly. Yes. So two, so here's two links. One. Listingsleeds.com forward slash calculator. That's where you can go and play around with the numbers and make sure you are going to make a ton of money this year. And then also make sure you go to leadgenwebinar.com, leadgenwebinars with an S, leadgenwebinars.com for other live training classes that we do every week. All right. <clears throat> Any other questions? Awesome. Let's see here. I think we may have one more question before we go. And nope. We're good to go. All right, listen, everybody, thank you so much for joining us as always. And again, go to leadgenwebinars.com for more uh, information and other trainings that we offer. Go to listingsleads.com to sign up for your free trial if you are not a client yet. And if you are a client, make sure you get in the mastermind group, share your successes, and let's support know how we can help you. And we'll talk to you soon.